Dear children, today we will discuss about zero vector or null vector. So, what do you mean by zero vector? You see, zero vector. Zero vector means it is a vector having zero magnitude and arbitrary direction. So, you remember a vector having zero magnitude and arbitrary direction is called as zero vector or null vector. Then magnitude zero understood. That means it has no magnitude. But what is about the direction? Direction is arbitrary. What do you mean by arbitrary? Arbitrary means no specific direction. If that depends upon the vector itself. That means if you say the direction, direction of zero vector is towards right, then yes, we can say it is towards right. If you say it is towards left, yes, it is towards left. If it is, you say if it is in the upward direction, yes, it is in the upward direction. It is in the downward direction, yes, it is in the downward direction. Means it has no specific direction. Then what is the necessity of this zero vector? Here, question arises, what is the input times of zero vector? You see, if you take two scalars, let it be 5. 5 minus 5, what is your answer? That is 0. You know, you take a vector A. Then, if I will ask, what is A vector minus A? So you remember when you are two vectors, then the result is another vector. If you subtract two vectors, then the result is a another vector. So here you subtract 5 minus 5, the answer is 0. 0 is a scalar. But here, if you subtract a vector from a vector, then what will be your answer? If you write 0, then you see it is vector, it is vector, but it is a scalar. 0 is a scalar, it has only magnitude. So, as we know, subtraction of two vectors gives you another vector. So, here you cannot write 0, you can write 0 vector. It is the representation of 0 vector. Similarly, you know, 5 plus 0 is 5. Here, you cannot write 0 with a vector. Because you cannot write, you cannot add scalar with a vector. So, we have to write 0 vector. That means, a vector plus 0 vector is a vector. Similarly, a vector minus 0 vector is a vector. 0 into a vector that is 0 vector. That means what is your conclusion? Conclusion is that 0 vector plays same role in vector as 0 plays in scanner. So, what is the physical example of zero vector? You know, velocity is a scalar quantity or vector quantity. Velocity is a vector quantity. If I will ask, if the body is at rest, then what will be the velocity? If the body is at rest, the velocity is we are saying the velocity is 0. You know, 0 is a scalar. Velocity is a vector. How a vector can be equal to scalar? So here, you can say the velocity vector is the 0 vector. When the body is at rest. Similarly, another example of 0 vector you can say, when 
a body moves with uniform velocity, then the acceleration is a zero vector. You know, when a body moves with a with constant velocity, the acceleration is zero, but acceleration is a vector quantity, zero is a scalar. So a vector cannot be equal to scalar. So it is more appropriate to say that the acceleration is a zero vector when a body moves with uniform velocity. So it is all about your zero vector. Lastly, you have to remember zero vector is a vector having zero magnitude and arbitrary direction. So if I ask how can you represent a zero vector? You know the length of the line gives you the magnitude. So if you represent a zero vector by an armor line, the length of the line will be zero, means it is equivalent to a point. So zero vector can be represented by a point because the length of the line will be zero. That means it is equivalent to a point. So now come to another important term that is your unit vector. Unit vector. Now, what is unit vector? You see, unit that means its magnitude is one unit having unit magnitude and direction. So unit vector of any vector is another vector having unit magnitude and direction is along the direction of the given vector. That means if it is a vector, let it be a vector, then what is the unit vector of a vector? Unit vector can be represented by cap. If you put a cap on A, then I can say this is the unit vector, unit vector of A vector. Similarly, if you have another vector B, then what is the unit vector of B vector? That is your B cap. So you remember this cap or hat you can say that represents unit vector. That means magnitude is one unit and direction is along the direction of the given vector. A cap is the unit vector of A vector. Its magnitude is A cap magnitude that is one and direction along the direction of A vector. Similarly, B cap is the unit vector of B vector. Its magnitude is 1 and direction is along the direction of B vector. So, how can we write a vector in terms of its unit vector? Any vector A can be written <coughs> as its magnitude into unit vector. So this mod gives you the magnitude. So a vector is equal to a vector magnitude into a cap. So a cap, if you write like this, then it then in the change in the magnitude of a vector. Here you can verify. A vector magnitude is a vector mod this one. What is the magnitude of A cap? That is 1. When you multiply 1 with this, then magnitude remains same as before. But this A cap gives you the direction of A vector. So it is your unit vector. So now comes to vector multiplied by number. Vector multiply by a real 
नंबर यू नो ए नंबर इज ए स्कालर सो व्हेन यू मल्टीप्लाई व्हेन यू मल्टीप्लाई ए वेक्टर विथ ए नंबर मींस व्हेन यू मल्टीप्लाई ए वेक्टर विथ ए स्कालर देन व्हाट विल बी द द रिजल्टेंट सो यू रिमेंबर द रिजल्टेंट इज ए वेक्टर देन व्हाट इज इट्स मैग्नीट्यूड सपोज यू टेक ए वेक्टर when you multiply a real number r or a scalar r with a vector that means the resultant is r a vector the resultant is a new vector then what is its magnitude magnitude is this resultant has the magnitude r times the magnitude of a vector then what is the direction If R is positive, you know the real number may be positive, may be negative. If R is positive, then R a vector has the same direction as that of a vector. If R is negative, then R a vector has the direction opposite to that of a vector. So here I can give one example. Suppose it is a vector you know the length of the line gives you the magnitude of the vector let it be the magnitude is represented by a line of length 10 cm when you multiply 2 2 means the resultant will be 2 a vector you see the magnitude will be twice means the length of the line becomes 20 cm as here a here 2 is positive so direction of 2a vector is same as a vector if you multiply minus 2 so the resultant will be minus 2a vector the magnitude will be twice but direction as it is negative so direction of minus 2a vector is opposite to that of a vector a vector is towards right here minus 2a vector will be towards left but the length of the line remains 20 cm so keep one physical example of this vector multiplied by a scalar or by a real number you can say acceleration when you multiply mass mass is a scalar then the resultant will be force so force has the magnitude m times the magnitude of acceleration numerically but also about the direction force has the same direction as that of a means acceleration so it is all about your vector multiplied by a scalar or by a real number so now come to polar vector or and axial vectors so what do you mean by polar vectors so you remember polar vectors these are the vectors which have a starting point or a point of application but what is the example force is a polar vector velocity is a polar vector acceleration is a polar vector so you remember polar vector means these are the vectors having a starting point or a point of application means these are the true vectors they have the direction they have the magnitude now come to axial vector what is axial vector you can say it is pseudo vector 
So what is speedometer or accelerometer? You remember, these are not actual vectors. So to represent some quantities in vector form, we have to assume these are the vectors. If these are the vectors, then what is their direction? So you remember, these are the vectors which represent rotational effect. That means the vectors associated with rotational motion are the accelerators. Like your angular velocity, angular displacement, angular momentum, torque, these are the accelerators. The is about their directions. The direction you remember that is along the axis of rotation. And that direction is determined by right hand thumb rule. So you remember axial vectors are the vectors which represent rotational effect and direction is along the axis of rotation. It is by convention. They have not the uh, directions but here we are assuming that directions are along the axis of rotation by the convention. We are considering these axial vectors because uh, in rotational motion some quantities can be mathematically expressed in terms of these axial vectors. That's why we are considering. That's why it is called as pseudovector. Why the pseudovector? Because these are not truly vectors. These are imaginary vectors. These are assumed vectors. Yes or no? 